My name is Edmund Gomez and I serve as the uh, uh, project director for the uh, Southern Pueblo Beginning Farmer and Rancher Program. I work with New Mexico State University Cooperative Extension Service. New Mexico State University is a Hispanic land grant and also an 1862 land grant uh, institution. Uh, what makes it unique about this project is that we partnered with the uh, with the 1994 uh, the Institute of American Indian Arts uh, in Santa Fe. It, to my knowledge, this is probably the only 1862 and 1994 uh, beginning farmer or rancher grant. And uh, we have developed a very good relationship with them and uh, basically building bridges as to how we can work together and continue uh, uh, expanding resources uh, to our producers especially the Native American community. This project was funded under USDA NEFA, uh, Beginning Farmer and Rancher Development Program. And while we started our funding uh, in 2012 and we just finished our program uh, uh, August 31st, 2015, we feel this has been a very, very successful project uh, targeting beginning farmers and ranchers in our southern pueblos. And the reason that um, that we chose to work with the Southern Pueblos is uh, because we were approached uh, by tribal elders that uh, they were concerned that um, the future of agriculture and especially culture within their Pueblos was being lost because they did not have new generations of, of uh, farmers taking over. When you look at the, at the culture of the Pueblo people in the Southwest, it goes back thousands of years. And probably the, 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 the beginning farmers that we were working with, uh, their ancestors have probably the longest continuous farming practices within this valley, in these valleys along the Rio Grande um, Valley for over thousands of years and more specifically in these communities uh, at least 1,000 years. We continue working with them and uh, it's very, um, uh, very assuring that uh, we are going to have a next generation of beginning farmers and ranchers with the turnouts that we, uh, that we had. We um, took the approach that uh, we were not going to uh, develop out a program specifically for them, but we were going to include them with the uh, assistance of tribal elders, which became our mentors, and uh, they assisted us in developing out individual curriculum for each individual beginning farmer and rancher. So when we started the program, we had these individual producers uh, visit with us, tell us exactly what it was that they wanted us to do for them and uh, how we could help them. Uh, we developed out curriculums uh, for these individuals. And as we started uh, developing out these curriculums, we wanted to make sure that we had uh, core programs in place that would um, uh, sustain them as, uh, as farmers uh, for the future. And first of all, we wanted to make sure that they had all uh, enrolled with, under USDA programs with Farm Service Agency and, and, uh, and NRCS uh, so that they would uh, be able to apply for USDA uh, programs. And then also in 2012, we were preparing for uh, the 2012 uh, Census of Agriculture. And we uh, made sure that each of these individuals uh, that, we, uh, that we were working with uh, did fill out their documents uh, on the census. So they were counted. Also, we, it's very important that, um, that they take record keeping classes. And uh, uh, through our experience, if you don't keep records, uh, then you cannot become a successful farmer or rancher. After all the preliminary uh, meetings, um, we were able to, uh, to start with 59 registered uh, producers and um, did our, our uh, farm visits, did us farm assessments, and assisted them with, like I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, developing out their, uh, their individualized curriculums. And at that point, then we started uh, developing out workshops and, uh, and other educational programs that uh, would assist them uh, in fulfilling uh, their curriculum. 
And this was a three, three year project. And after the first year, uh, things went very well. Uh, starting the second year, we started uh, involving on-farm demonstrations. And uh, the first, I think the second year, we completed five on-farm demonstrations and they varied from uh, uh, working with different types of uh, alfalfa, which would fit uh, their particular needs. Uh, others were developing uh, and building hoop house and hoop house production. We had a couple of individuals that wanted to bring back orchard production, uh, you know, fruit production back to their pueblos. Uh, so we started doing uh, uh, a couple of demonstration uh, plots uh, with fruit production. And uh, uh, it was, uh, so far, it looks like it's been very successful. The, uh, we also developed out workshops uh, on pruning and everything else associated uh, with that. Uh, we made it very, very clear that uh, also what we started with, uh, with these programs is that soil health is very, very important. And uh, we, uh, we took soil tests from all of our uh, uh, farms and we developed um, educational programs on uh, determining what the needs of, uh, of the particular fields were based on the soil tests. Also, uh, we had several far, uh, ranchers that were incorporated into our program and uh, we worked with them directly in uh, developing out range monitoring programs for, uh, for their range uh, uh, programs. And they've continued uh, to, uh, monitoring their, pro their, uh, their ranges. Uh, we feel that uh, if a rancher does not know uh, uh, the, you know, what their what the trend is in their ranch, uh, then they cannot be successful. And this is also based on, uh, you know, years of drought. Uh, we've been in drought for the last 10 years. Uh, we have finally, we started receiving some rainfall this past summer. But uh, this uh, uh, this type of educational process involves them directly and they know exactly what is going on out in their range. So that has been very, very helpful. Uh, we've also uh, uh, done several workshops in, on uh, herd health, uh, vaccination, uh, beef quality assurance, and, and it's, a, it's a long uh, gamut, of, I think, of, of, uh, of subject matter that, uh, that, uh, that they were uh, wanting to, to develop for them. So we continued, uh, whatever, whatever their needs are, uh, we continued working with them. Uh, I think overall, we, uh, uh, within the, th the last three years, we uh, provided over 50 uh, uh, subject matter workshops from one end uh, to the other, and um, uh, over 25 um, on-farm demonstrations. Uh, we also did field uh, trips uh, some individuals were interested in, in um, oh, let's say, for instance, uh, the processing of, uh, of their livestock. And uh, we, we uh, took them to a slaughtering facility and, and they saw from, um, uh, from the time that they, uh, that they sold their, their, uh, their beef uh, to the finished product that, uh, that, you, that they would see it in the, in the supermarket. So that was a very, very um, interesting um, uh, approach to... Uh, okay, how can I dream? And when I'm dreaming, uh, what are other people doing and how, what can I do to improve my farm and my ranch? Uh, another field trip was to uh, the Navajo uh, Irrigation Project uh, up close to Farmington. It's one of the largest um, farms actually in the entire United States. And they were able to, to see what another um, uh, Native American tribe can do as far as developing out a large scale farm. Uh, most of our producers, or for the most part, 99% of our producers are very, very small scale uh, producers, but yet they can see uh, the other side of the spectrum as to what large scale production can be. When we started uh, the program, uh, we, uh, uh, we recruited 59 beginning farmers and ranchers. Of these 59, beginning farmers and ranchers, uh, I would say probably about uh, 60% uh, were farmers and 40% uh, were either ranchers or combination of ranch and forage production. Okay. So it was a pretty good split. 
Something that we learned about uh, the beginning, our beginning farmer and rancher project was that when, uh, when we started uh, um, recruiting, I, I guess in the back of my mind, I felt that our beginning farmers were going to be young, young individuals just out of high school, maybe out of college and, and wanting to pursue. But we found out that uh, more than 50% of our producers, our beginning farmer and rancher producers, uh, were probably middle-aged and, and older. And a lot of these individuals uh, had already retired from a previous profession and wanted to go back and, uh, and, and go back to the farm and also teach their children and their grandchildren uh, what their ancestors had taught them. And um, this continues to be a, a, a very good learning experience, not only for us, but also for the beginning farmers and ranchers because we believe that uh, these individuals worked as a far, as a community and as a family unit rather than, than as individuals. So I think this guarantees, you know, the, uh, that the program will continue uh, within the next two generations. Because uh, when we would have our workshops or when we would go out and provide one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, technical and educational assistance to our beginning farmers, the entire family would go out and participate in the programs. So we had children as young as maybe five or six years of age that were learning along the way, as, as well as teenagers and early and uh, young adults. So we, we truly believe that uh, by bringing this program into these communities, uh, it's not the, just the generation that we were targeting, but also the future generations so I think that there's going to be more of an impact than what we really felt early on. One thing that we did uh, discover was that as we were opening our programs to our, uh, uh, not only to the beginning farmers and ranchers and their immediate families, but also it provided an opportunity uh, for other community members uh, to participate in our programs. Given an example, uh, we uh, participated in several uh, agriculture conferences, which we would bring our beginning farmers and ranchers up front and central, but yet we would leave it open uh, for the community to attend. So instead of just reaching out to 59 producers, in many cases we were uh, we were reaching out to two to three hundred individuals. Uh, but yet, like I said, uh, it was we would leave the doors open and the community learned, um, the community works together and learns together. One of the uh, project's objectives was to include USDA uh, agencies, especially Farm Service Agency and um, NRCS and also NAS. Uh, we made it a point that at each one of our workshops, USDA was represented and given time uh, to provide their information on new programs and projects and uh, we also gave them time uh, to work individually with our producers and others that came to sign them up for their programs. So overall I think the outreach um, potential for USDA was given a shot in the arm through our program by um, providing a venue for them to come and work in our communities. This brought USDA from their field offices into directly into the communities uh, where people uh, could come and uh, it was convenient for them not only to, to learn about their programs but to sign up with their programs. Success of the program monetarily uh, is, is kind of hard to, um, to predict but what we've seen from the first years that we were working uh, with these producers uh, most of them have expanded uh, uh, their production have uh, looked for new fields, uh, their yields have gone up even though we, uh, we were in the middle of a drought uh, and this has a lot to do I think with soil health, fertility and, um, and watering practices. Also in the marketing area uh, we were seeing a lot of our ranchers uh, marketing uh, together and instead of selling maybe five or six animal units uh, they were selling, uh, they were uh, combining their, um, uh, their, their herds and they were selling at truckloads. So they were able to get more funding that, in, that, uh, in that way. 
Also, uh, we uh, started a wool uh, marketing project uh, where we would bring the buyer directly to the reservations and they would purchase the wool and they were able to get a higher uh, amount uh, per pound than they had previously selling at the local trading posts. So uh, overall, I think monetarily, uh, the project really did bring uh, and put dollars back in their pockets that uh, they wouldn't have uh, had that opportunity if we, ha we hadn't been here. When the funding for our uh, program expired, um, you know, in many cases when, when uh, grants end, that's the end of the program. In our particular case, we continue to provide outreach and extension programming uh, to our producers so they're not let out in the cold. Uh, we do not have the resources currently to expand programs or expand it to other audiences. Uh, in the future, we, we hope to, uh, to apply for, for, new, uh, uh, for new grant money to expand to the northern pueblos and, um, and other groups uh, as we see uh, necessary. But we also have uh, the consolation that we have a county extension office at each of the counties that we work with, and that provides support. Uh, but overall, um, funding, grant funding for these type of programs really makes a major impact on the individual producers and especially those that we're targeting uh, as beginning farmers and ranchers so that they will succeed. As we were developing out our beginning farmer rancher program with the Southern Pueblos, we were also approached by um, uh, leadership from the eight Northern tribes that they wanted something similar like this because they're also finding that uh, a lot of their youth and are, are leaving the farms and they're concerned also about losing their culture, which is very well tied to agriculture. So we would continue looking for funding and hopefully in the future uh, be granted funding to continue and expand what we were doing with the Southern Pueblos and expand it to the Northern Pueblos because there is so much need to continue this. Uh, we are very also concerned that uh, the endangered species here are these uh, very delicate cultures that have been here for over a thousand years, but because of, uh, of current situations, uh, they are not keeping in, in or retaining farming and ranching traditions and as we've mentioned earlier, culture and, uh, is very much tied to, the, uh, to agriculture. And if we lose agriculture in these communities, we probably will lose culture, their culture, uh, within the next couple of generations.